It is time to continue the conversation with a Golf Today roundtable as we welcome in Golf Channel senior writers Rex Hoggard and Ryan Lavner. Rex, let's start with you as Scotty Scheffler gets it done at Augusta National for the second time. It appeared by brute force this time. How are we going to define this era of Scheffler? I mean, the era of Scheffler is starting to inch towards Tiger Woods. We talked about this last night on the podcast with Lavner. I think we're not going to get there because Tiger was such a generational player. But certainly when you talk to other players, the idea is if you see Scotty's name on a leaderboard, it's starting to feel like Tiger Woods. You're starting to look over your shoulder. You're starting to think it's already over. Because there was a ton about halfway through the round on Sunday at Augusta National where you thought this is going to be exciting. This is going to be a, a three, four players in the mix. They're all going to be doing it out on the back nine on Sunday, exactly what you want. And then Scotty kind of did the Tiger Woods thing on the ninth hole, hits it almost in the hole, hits it to kick in range, birdies the 10th hole. And it seems like it was over at that point. And very few players have been able to do that. So I, I, I'm always reluctant to compare anyone to Tiger Woods because it's so unfair, it's so unrealistic, but he's getting close. Yeah, Rex, I think that this Masters was certainly revealing in, in ways that we haven't seen uh, over the past two years with Scotty Scheffler. Obviously, we see the technical proficiency, the, the long and straight driving, the towering iron shots, uh, the great hands on and around the greens, making six birdies in his last 11 holes to put the tournament on ice was, was obviously impressive. But what I took away was his presence. And Scotty Scheffler is not intimidating in the traditional sense, but he is fearsome when going head-to-head -head against some of his opponents. I think that's what played out over 72 holes at Augusta National. Think about the first two rounds. He's paired with Roy McIlroy and Xander Schauffele. All Sky does in the opening round was throw down a 66. On Friday, in the most difficult conditions, he stands strong, shoots 72 when Roy McIlroy uh, gets blown off the map. On Saturday, paired with Nikolai Hogard in the penultimate group. While well, Nikolai Hogard uh, surges into the lead and then flies too close to the sun, making five straight bogeys, Scotty Scheffler is the one who kind of withstands that surge and ends up staking himself the 54-hole lead. And then on Sunday, against Kyle Morikawa, one of the very best iron players we have seen over the past five years on the PGA Tour, Scotty Scheffler was even more precise and avoided the uncharacteristic blunders that, that Kyle Morikawa made uh, on the ninth hole uh, and then on the 11th hole as well. And so Scotty Scheffler is just putting <coughs> so much pressure on his opponents, not to play necessarily perfect golf, but getting very, very close to mistake-free golf, and that's a very uncomfortable position to play from. You know, I was listening to an extremely fascinating conversation, Rex and Lab, you guys were having on your podcast yesterday, and it was about... Uh, Rex, it was about Scotty Scheffler and, you know, this incredible run he's on, but fatherhood being right in front of him. Uh, it's a very nuanced conversation because, obviously, it's one of the greatest gifts in the world, becoming a parent, especially for the first time. But how do you envision that impacting uh, this star and the, the, the level in which he's playing at with such an important part of life directly in front of him? Right now, it's impossible for me to imagine anything impacting him as a player based on just the way he's been able to do the last, I don't know, two years, certainly what he's done the last few weeks on the PGA Tour. There is something to be said for the idea, and he said it, Scotty said it last night in his press conference. He has his priorities clearly right where he wants them to be, and first and foremost is going to be family. It's going to be his wife, Meredith. It's going to be the newborn that they're hoping to welcome in just a few weeks. It's going to be the rest of his, his family. I think that's always been the case. So I'm not quite sure how it's going to impact him as a player, as a professional. But there is something to be said for it's a really selfish sport. To get to number one in the world, you have to have such a singular focus where you, you almost put everything else on the back burner. I've seen it from players time and time again. It's a lonely game. You spend a lot of time on the range when you're at home. You just don't show up to play golf tournaments and expect something magical to happen if you haven't put the time in. But if anyone can find the balance, I think Scotty Scheffler would be the one that, that can do it. Lab, we've seen this movie play out before with Scotty Scheffler back in 2022. Wins the Masters, had four wins on the season. Didn't win again after that. Now he has three wins, a green jacket. In his career, he's never won a PGA Tour event after the Masters on the PGA Tour schedule. Why is this year going to be different? George, you don't sound convinced that Scotty Scheffler is all of a sudden going to learn how to win in June or July. <laughs> uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm not so sure that we're going to see any sort of downturn in form. And I think it's so important what happened at the Masters because a, a, a favorite going into the tournament oftentimes does not win. But this was a combination where Scotty Shuffle was a 4-1 to favorite, ends up doing what he was doing. Yes, he's playing great golf. He's lost to just a total of one golfer since the beginning of March. But I also think you have to look at the landscape, George. The reason why Scotty Shuffler was such a prohibitive favorite 
at Augusta National was look at, look at the rest of the top 10 players in the world, whether it was Wyndham Clark who missed the cut at Augusta National making his first Masters appearance, but Roy McIlroy is searching for his game, does not have a win since Dubai earlier this year. John Rahm finished T45 uh, in his Masters title defense. Victor Hovland is searching, just withdrew from the RBC Heritage so he can toil away from the spotlight and try to get his game in order. Xander Schauffele, uh, who was in contention at the Masters, at least with, at least with an outside chance, uh, admitted that his game is still not all the way there. The, the, the rest of, of sort of the B tier, to Scotty Scheffler's A tier, needs to find a, 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 some sort of semblance of consistency and, and to challenge him, or this is going to be the year where Scotty Scheffler doesn't just win three or four times, I think it's very conceivable he could win five, six, or seven times. You know, Lav, looking at Ludwig, uh, Ludwig, excuse me, Ludwig Oberg, uh, what he was able to do in his first major performance, and nonetheless at Augusta, losing to only the greatest player in the world right now on the planet, he looks so comfortable. He looks so calm and collected out there. What do you make of his first performance on that type of stage? I mean, this is exactly what we have seen since Ludwig Oberg turned pro last year uh, at the NCAA championship after a pretty decorated career at Texas Tech. Found himself right in contention on the PGA Tour, acclimated himself quite nicely. Went across the pond after the rest of the PGA Tour season uh, was continuing in the playoffs. Uh, he wins uh, in Europe as well. He wins on the PGA Tour. He acclimates himself well in such a tense environment like the Ryder Cup. None of his peers are surprised by what Ludwig Oberg is doing and why he has crashed the top 10 in the world ranking in less than a year as a pro. I think the only surprise was, was to see him at, at Augusta National Fair as well as he did. Obviously, his ball striking was going to put him uh, in position. Obviously, the sort of on-course comportment that he has was sort of a good fit for a week when a lot of patience, a lot of diligence, uh, a lot of level-headedness uh, was rewarded. And I think you saw that uh, certainly in the top five uh, on the leaderboard there. I mean, Ludwig Oberg in less than a year has to be considered on the short list of favorites for every major championship moving forward because he's built for this test uh, and he has proven it uh, over the past uh, 10 months or so. And he's played in exactly one major championship. That's sort of the amazing part. I mean, we, I'll go back to last fall when Lav and I were talking about this on the podcast and the idea that he was going to play on the Ryder Cup. And we always compare the Ryder Cup to being in the final round of a major with a chance to win. He had never played in one before. So it was baffling to me how he was going to find a way to sort of endure all of that pressure that he'd never done before. Didn't have a problem whatsoever. My column last night was on the idea. There's this dogma that a first-timer has not won at Augusta National since 1979, since Fuzzy Seller did it. It's been almost half a century since it happened. And we were watching yesterday, and I thought, if it's not for Scotty Scheffler doing Scotty Scheffler things, being special and sort of walking away from the field, Ludwig not only would have won, he probably would have done it pretty easily. I mean, he easily won the B flight. And I talked to his caddy yesterday afternoon, and we were sort of talking about the idea that they touched on it early in the week, the idea that a rookie has not won at the Masters in that long. And Joe immediately rolled his eyes, and he said, not only did I expect him to win, but I expect him to win every major that he plays in. He's that special of a player. Certainly, he's a robot on the golf course. I've never seen so many somebody hit so many shots that don't have any curve to them. That number is not familiar to the game that I play or that I see on the on a PGA Tour Sunday. But the other half is is how confident he is on the golf course. I don't think anybody enjoyed themselves yesterday than Ludwig, even Scotty Scheffler. Yeah, Oberg playing with a ton of confidence, and rightly so, how he's ratcheted up the world ranks to, to seventh. So many other storylines we could hit on, be it like Bryson, Max Homer, the performance those guys had. But we have to end it with Tiger Woods and what we saw. Tiger extending the cut streak to 24 straight, but then fading completely from contention with that Saturday 82. Lav, how are we going to write this final chapter for Tiger? I leave Augusta National, George, probably as pessimistic ever, as I ever have a, about Tiger Woods. I think just for this reason. You know, Rex was at, in the Bahamas for the Hero World Challenge. I listened to the press conference and saw his, his interview transcripts for the rest of the week. And that was, you know, he, he offered a pretty optimistic view of what his 2024 was going to look like. He offered sort of this once a month uh, playing cadence that he was going to uh, be saying, he, you know, the lower right leg really wasn't the issue anymore. Uh, he had felt as good uh, as he had in a very long time. And yet we're at the point now where he's finishing dead last uh, in the Masters. Uh, he's clearly hampered, not just by the, the leg issues, but his lower back was obviously causing him uh, some se severe limitations as well. What has gone on in the past four months 
that has gotten Tiger Woods from a point where he was speaking optimistically uh, in early December in the Bahamas to now Augusta National, where it's it's sort of a, a, a athletic marvel that he can just finish 72 holes. He's completed just five tournament rounds this year, and yet this is the physical shape he's he's in. Uh, I'm not uh, optimistic for the rest of the major championship season. I just hope that he can find uh, some sort of joy and and solace in this because it's 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 hard to watch at this point. I'm with Lav on, on this one. It is hard to watch, and certainly you you saw him on the golf course last week. Uh, I, I do think it's funny that Lavner ran out onto the golf course on Sunday because on Saturday because he was sure that Tiger was going to withdraw. And my take was, yes, he's probably uncomfortable. Yes, things on his body hurt. We all know that about Tiger Woods. But I don't think this was an injury on any level. I think this has everything to do with he's just not playing golf very well right now. And the byproduct of that is because he can't practice. He can't put the time. He can't put the effort into it. I was encouraged by 72 holes. I said at the beginning of the week, like we haven't seen it in a long time. So I needed to hit for him to stay upright for 72 holes. That's a step in the right direction, but he still has a long way to go. Yeah, it was at least seven within the lead going into the weekend when the wheels kind of mm -hmm. fell off. But that's, I mean, the rigors of competing in majors for 72 holes is a completely different test. All right, guys, uh, enjoyed having you on. They're Rex and Laugh.